Okay, today we are going to cook this beautiful beef in uh, under high pressure in a uh, pressure canner. So um, here we have our nice beef. The herb that's on that beef is tarragon, and uh, tarragon has a nice licorice flavor to it. It goes perfect with beef. If you haven't tried it, you should try it. Tarragon and beef. And then over here we have our veggies. This is um, parsnips, a couple of onions just to help mellow it out. And then in the bottom down here we have um, turnips. And you can see that they're a little bit smaller than a baseball probably. It's been a while since I held a baseball. Um, if these were the big turnips, you'd want to cut them into chunks about this size. Now this is going to go into the pressure canner for about an hour, so it's okay that the vegetables be fairly big and beefy. You don't have to make them that small. Um, in fact, they'll hold up a little bit. You, you don't typically cook vegetables that long in a pressure canner. They're more like a 20... What, say a 20 minute cook but you want this beef to cook for an hour in the under pressure so that it's uh, perfectly uh, it melts all the fiber and all the uh, ligaments and all that kind of stuff in the meat and it makes it just delicious and of course this all has to be the pressure canner uses steam to cook and bring things under pressure so you need about three cups of some kind of a liquid and the liquid can be water or it can be anything else you come up with and uh, what I have here is a cup of homemade cherry wine a cup of homemade mead from honey and a half a cup of uh, vinegar and a half a cup of beef uh, broth, uh, broth or uh, stock, beef stock. Okay, so that's that. Now, this is the pressure canner, and what I have here is I have three layers of racks. So uh, in the bottom, I took out the the jar. There's a rack that normally it's down here. I'll show you. That rack down there is the jar. You would put jars on that to keep them from breaking during canning. So I pull that out and I put in the bottom a flat rack. And uh, that'll allow more steam to move more freely throughout the pot because we're gonna, with these racks, we're gonna create three layers of meat and veggies stacked up so that everything isn't all sitting in the bottom kind of gives some room for the steam to move around and cook things nice. Um, for those of you who are afraid of pressure canners, there's really no need to be afraid of them anymore. Uh, when I was a kid, I'm, I'm actually older than I look, but when I was a kid, you pressure canners were kind of problematic, the old the old ones. Um, but nowadays they're not a problem. Because first thing is uh, they have a they have a valve on them, a gauge. And the gauge there is to help you uh, I'll show you the video here of getting this thing rolling, but the gauge is excellent because it helps you see how fast you're building pressure so if you're really going to the moon you're going to want to turn your gas down and that's another thing these work best if you can place them over a gas burner as opposed to electric you have more more precise control over the heat but the the gauge there is really just is there to help you see how fast things are moving. Um, here we have 
the weight. These weights come in different sizes. Um, they come in 5, 10, and 15. This is a 15. The steam outlet is here. The weight holds the steam in until so much pressure builds up that it lifts the weight and allows steam out. This is the lock and um, this prevents you from opening up the lid when there's pressure inside the kettle uh, which was a common failure in the old the old canners is people didn't have this and couldn't tell how much pressure is in there they go to open up the lid and then blow the lid off and smack them in the in the nose very painful and then if all of this um, still get too much pressure in here and pressure builds or if if this gets clogged sometimes uh, you know schmutz from the food inside um, I've seen it a lot happen when cooking beans those little shell things come off the beans and can get lodged in here and, and prevent this steam from coming out um, too much pressure builds up and that's what this is for this little rubber gasket will blow out of there and allow all the pressure to escape so those are all the um, safety features of the modern day pressure canners um, these and you can see here this is the lock here so when the pressure builds this pushes up and stops the lid from opening and then of course they all have this gasket and you should take really good care of this gasket and it should be replaced from time to time as it ages uh, these things these pressure canners now this is a uh, seven quart this seven quart pressure canner is, I can can uh, seven quarts of food in here at once and uh, they're very these can be pretty expensive but you can get them on Craigslist or eBay used or go to garage sales and um, and you can still get parts for them if you need to replace some and you'd probably want to do that if you bought it used okay so um, I'm gonna put all the beef and the vegetables in there put my racks in there and then I'll show you when it's done <clears throat> okay so you can see there I have the first chunk of meat in the bottom on the rack some of the vegetables around it and uh, the second layer going in and so I'll just repeat that so there'll be another piece of meat more veggies and then the next layer Okay, and then there's the second layer. So another chunk of meat with the uh, tarragon on it, tarragon, and then uh, more veggies. And then uh, the third layer with another rack here. Uh, and we'll put the meat, the, the last chunk of meat and the remaining vegetables, and uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, so there's the third layer and the remaining vegetables. And um, so now we need our liquid. Because remember, you have to have liquid in your... Now, you, you don't have to... You know, we could have done it when we started. We don't have to do it now, but there does have to be liquid. So now we're going to pour our liquid in. That's it. And now we're ready to put on our lid and um, take it out and get it going on the fire. Okay, so here we go. We're outside and I've got the canner on a burner here, a gas burner, propane. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to get this thing started. Now, if you notice here, I have uh, the weight off. So the weight stays off until there's a steady steam stream of steam coming out of that pipe. 
And the reason why you want to do that is you want to push all the air out of the kettle. And uh, so when you see steam coming out of there, then I'll just drop the weight on there. And uh, when that gauge gets to about 16, the weight will begin to rattle. And then uh, I'll begin to adjust the fire to get a... Um, I, I want to adjust the fire to keep it at a steady state. Okay. Now you don't want to leave your kettle... Uh, this is going to be on here for an hour, but we don't want to leave the kettle until we find that steady state. There's going to be a place where the fire is just perfect. And, uh, and that fire is going to be... is going to depend on in, in our case the surroundings so uh, the colder it is the hotter the fire needs to be and if we were in the middle of July well then you wouldn't need as much fire okay so what will happen is I'll fire this thing up get it going and uh, once I drop the weight on there uh, it'll build up pressure and then you'll see the lock here uh, lock into place and then you'll see the pressure begin to build on the gauge. Alright, so I'm going to show off the camera and get that going. Now, you can, it's been about uh, roughly five minutes and you can see that, hopefully see, that the steam is starting to come out of that um, pipe right there. And it's coming out, uh, you know, it's kind of spitting and spurting. Um, but we're trying to get the steam to push all the air out of the kettle and um, so I think we're getting pretty close here to putting the weight on the pipe and now what will happen see is that weight will prevent the steam from getting out so pressure will begin to build and the next thing you'll see is that this lock when pressure gets built up in there this button will pop up and that will is the lid lock it will prevent the lid from opening when it's under pressure so I'll shut off the camera again and wait uh, for another five ten minutes or something for that to happen okay so let's see it's been um, about another three minutes and you can see that the lid lock is up and locked into place and now what you'll notice is that the uh, gauge will begin as pressure continues to build the gauge there will move and um, climb and go all right so now we wait till it gets to 15 pounds this will begin to jiggle and that's when we start our one hour count for cooking the meat and the veggies. It'll probably take another 10 minutes for it to get the pressure. Okay, so you can see the gauge there is running about uh, 17 and a half and the weight is rocking. Um, that's probably about right. Uh, maybe a little hot so what I've been doing is of course I begin to turn it down turn the gas down uh, and it isn't an, an immediate thing so you have to kind of turn it down and wait and look at it turn it down wait and look at it that kind of thing so um, but now the the one hour starts here at this point and um, all said it took me 13 minutes to get to this place to this point um, so now we we wait an hour but what I'll do is I won't go anywhere I'm not gonna go inside and watch TV for an hour until I get this thing at a steady state and a steady state is when that thing is rocking and that gauge isn't moving and that means I've got the right amount of heat at the right um, uh, under the kettle and everything's at a steady state uh, so it's really that simple and uh, there isn't really anything more to show you 
except that uh, I'll probably be here for another 10 minutes, like I said, just making sure that I got the heat exactly perfect. We don't want that to fall below 15 pounds. Um, we we want to stay right where we're at here, or may, maybe a little less. We can go down to like 16 and 16 and a half. All right. So there you have it. I've dialed in the gas probably about perfect. And like I say, it's just kind of a little gentle turn of the regulator on the gas to turn it down and then you wait and then uh, you see what that did but now you want it just to go like this for um, for the rest of the time and uh, the beep that comes out of here is just extraordinary uh, when I was a kid my I grew up on a farm in Iowa and my mother used to can beef and my brother and I used to break into the <laughs> stock and eat all of her beef, canned beef. Oh man, she'd get so angry at us. But it was so good. So, um, so I'll let this go. Just let it go to the end and, uh, I'll show you what to do when, when the hour is up. So, okay. So there we are. We're about, uh, three quarters of the way done here. There's about another 15 minutes to reach that hour. And uh, you can see that it's all been steady state. The uh, gauge is pretty locked in. Got a nice little rock to the weight. Uh, everything's perfect. So uh, 15, 15 more minutes and then uh, what we'll do is we'll just simply shut the gas off and walk away and let the let it cool down on its own that's what we do so uh, that's what uh, I'll show you that process when it when we get there Something about it that's kind of relaxing, though, just kind of listening to the chug, chug, chug of the steam. Oh, the other thing I should mention is, you would think a lot of, you know, a lot of the liquid inside the pot would like boil away or, you know, leave, but it doesn't because we're keeping it, the majority of it trapped inside. So, uh, actually, the majority of the liquid that we put in there originally, the three cups, are still in the kettle. Uh, very little of it has. Uh, you know, come out into the into the atmosphere. So um, anyway, I'll uh, shoot it shoot it when it's all done here. Good. Okay, it's been an hour, and uh, the meat will be done, and of course the vegetables were done probably a half hour ago. Uh, but now all, I do, all I'm going to do now is just shut the heat off and leave it alone. And it'll take, you know, well, in the middle of summer, it'll, it takes quite a while actually to cool down. But, you know, it's pretty chilly out today here. So it won't, uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes for it to cool down. And uh, so then I'll come back out and I'll show you once it's down. So all I do now is just basically shut off the heat. The fire goes out. You know, shut off the gas and the fire goes out. And I shut off the regulator. You can see already the uh, weight is starting to slow down already. And we just leave it like this. We don't, you know, we don't take the weight off. We don't push down on the button. We don't do anything. We just simply go in the house and. Uh, come back and check on it in about 10 or 15 minutes. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so now it's all cooled down. You can see that it's at zero. It's still hot though. Uh, the lock is down. We take that off. No s steam coming out. 
So um, now we can take it inside and open it up, see what's going on. Okay, so here we have the juice, the vegetables, and the meat. And the meat is nice and tender, and it's moist. Vegetables are soaked in the juice. The juice will set aside and, and we'll let the beef fat separate and solidify, and then we'll cut the fat off of it. This juice is great for soups and making rice and things like that. So there you have it. Perfect.